takes to keep your car clean in the wintertime is totally different than what it takes to keep your car clean in the summer, spring, and fall. You get all kinds of weather. You get salt on the roads, you get acid on the roads. There's all kinds of things that you want to get off your car as soon as possible. The video that I'm about to shoot is going to tell you exactly how to keep your car looking good all winter long. We're going to start with Libby's totally trashed out Volvo. She loves to go skiing. She's gone skiing twice since our last car wash. She is actually the assistant producer to this video. And just so happened when I saw her car, I said, this thing is perfect. We're going to use your car to shoot, of course, with skiing for it. So we're going to walk you around the car real quick just to show you how much muck there is. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to use to get her car back to gray. Well, Libby came through for us with a really, really thrashed car. So. Check out the amount of grit. A, there's been gravel on the streets, there's been salt on the streets, and there's been magnesium chloride on the streets since the last time Libby's washed this thing. So if you take a look at all of the dirt accumulated in the wheels here, the tires, in every single nook, in every cranny, there is a ton of dirt in there. The back of the car is always where you're gonna get a lot of dirt accumulated, no matter what kind of car you have. That's just the way the air comes up and goes. So the back, you want to spend lots of extra time with the wand, making sure that you're really knocking all that heavy crud out. Another thing, in the wheel wells, this thing has so much junk and crud and dirt in the wheel wells, you want to make sure and get that out. That's, that's either salt, gravel, or mag chloride, which can hurt your car. Spend time really slowly blasting that out. In every crack, in every crevice, there is going to be a ton of dirt that's down inside and you can't even see it. The side markers, the mirrors, but especially the wheels. There's always going to be a ton of dirt and gravel in the wheels. Last part that I'm going to go ahead and show is the front of the car. Now, of course, whatever's kicked up by the car in front of you is going to be in the front of your car. Make sure you spend a lot of time blasting all the dirt and the crud out of the front of your car. Okay, now before we start washing the car, one of the things that we always like to do first is prep the wash bucket. And you wanna make sure you have all the stuff you need. So you're gonna put a few things in the car and bring it to the car wash. One of them is gonna be a bucket. If you have two, bring two, it's even better. It keeps the car cleaner while you're washing it. Now, I also wanna make sure that I have the brushes for both the tires and the fenders, for the nice wheels. And then I wanna make sure I have some wash pads I want to make sure we have the car shampoo. This is the new 36 ounce size, by the way. Very, very beefy. I want to make sure that we have our green wheel cleaner, our all-purpose cleaner, and a bottle of our detail spray. These are all things that you're going to use to get the car clean. Once you're done, you're going to want to have a couple of drying towels. Now, you can also use one of the, one of the uh, uh, blasters, like an air compressed air, but typically at a car wash, it's going to be really hard for you to find power. So realistically, you're going to use more towel less compressed air, so I brought two towels today. Also, no thorough car cleaning is complete without the turbo stick. So this is the way to clean the backs of the wheels really easily without having to take my gloves off. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the wash bucket first, and then we're gonna go ahead and push start on the wash. Okay, here we have two wash buckets, and in the bottom of both wash buckets, I have the grit guard bucket inserts. See the grit guards in there? What these little grit guard bucket inserts do, these guys have fins on the bottom. This keeps the water from agitating in the bottom of the bucket. When you're washing your car in the wintertime, there's going to be a ton of grit and dirt on it. You're going to want to use grit guards for sure for all of your winter washing. It'll reduce the amount of scratching that happens to your car when you're washing your car after a snow or any kind of uh, weather condition. So both buckets have these. Keep my gloves on every moment I can. And then I'm gonna put one wash pad in the bottom of each. Now I've got two sizes, my jumbo, and I've got my small guy, my standard wash pad. These are both super, super soft and nice. I don't use the merino wool wash pad for winter washing on my winter drivers. I keep that for summer, spring, maybe fall washing only. Now, I've got these in both. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna blast car wash soap on both wash pads. Now, car shampoo is thick. It's very, very sudsy. And this is how much I put on each wash pad, okay? So, when you're filling up your wash buckets with, with water now, 
I know there's going to be a ton of suds created, so I'm going to stand back a little bit to make sure that I don't get suds all over me filling up the buckets. Now there's always a coin operated car wash in your neighborhood and ideally you'll have one that takes credit cards. Now debit cards is what I'm going to use today, but using a debit card to wash your car makes it so much easier. You have to sit there and go back to the change machine and get more and more and more. So I swipe my card now. I'm going to go ahead and go to high pressure rinse. I'm going to spend the most time here with the high pressure rinse getting this thing rinsed down. Now there's two options for this. One, I can use the, the gun at the wash, at the car wash to fill the bucket. Two, I can actually have the bucket prepped at home if I'm real confident on where the bucket's going that it won't tip over. If you know that you can put the bucket somewhere in your car, well, it definitely won't have any possibility of tipping over. Prep them at home, it's easier and faster. You don't pay money for the water that's coming out of there like I'm paying now. Here, we're gonna go ahead and fill it at the place. So putting the gun all the way into the bottom of the bucket, then pull the trigger and make sure that I don't have the gun on top of the wash pad. It'll, it'll tear a hole in the side of the wash pad. Okay, now this part's, this part's very important. Now I've got that bucket half full I'm gonna take my other wash pad, put it on top of the other one, and get it down in there. This way I have plenty of soap on both wash pads. Okay, next, I wanna fill the second bucket with just plain clean water. So now I have a soap, soapy bucket, two wash pads, lots of soap in them. I've got one totally clean bucket of water. At this point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around and I'm going to clean all four wheels and wheel wells, and then I'll come back and we're going to blast the car down and wash it. So here I go. It's going to blast the wheels off first. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show our new 36 ounce all-purpose cleaner with the foaming nozzle. This thing is awesome. And I'm gonna go ahead and blast out the wheel wells and the tires. The same go around. Notice how you can see the actual all-purpose cleaner working. You can see all the dirt just falling off the wheel. That is what a foaming sprayer does. It leaves the product on the surface you're cleaning versus just spraying it on where it can, it can run off real easily. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and use the, the, the fender and tire brush to go ahead and knock down the, both those things, the fender and the tire. Okay, I'm only gonna take one bottle of product around the car at a time. For me, it makes it easier. I can keep the same brush, same bottle. When it's cold, I just wanna be quick. I wanna get all the tires and all the wheel wells done before I even go onto the wheels.
after I've used the brush, I always want to make sure and rinse it out. If it's filthy, filthy, rinse it out after every wheel. If it's not terrible, you can rinse it out after you're done doing all four. Now I've got all four of the tires and the wheel wells all rinsed out. I went through them with all-purpose cleaner. I blasted them out with the tire and wheel well brush. Now I'm going to use the green wheel cleaner and the new foaming sprayer to do the wheels. I always want to make sure and get in where the lug nuts go, and I always want to make sure and get the back of the wheel. That's called the barrel of the wheel. The foaming sprayer on the green wheel cleaner is awesome. So this tool goes into the back of the wheels and gets the entire barrel clean. Gotten the entire back of the wheel with the exception of behind the calipers. That's the one spot I want to make really careful that the turbo stick clears. If it doesn't clear, I'll do all four wheels to one spot where I can't reach, then roll the car forward or backward about 12 inches and then get that last spot. I'm also going to keep the turbo stick lubed up with green wheel cleaner. Makes it work all the better. So now for the face of the wheel, we're going to use our Boulder Blonde Bleached Boar's Hair Bristle Brush. This thing is a Cadillac of all brushes. It is the best you can buy. I'm going to get it, start by getting a little bit wet. I'm going to blast it with green wheel cleaner, Grass a little bit more green wheel cleaner on the wheel, and then I'm going to do the face of the wheel. If you have a lot of little nooks and crannies in your wheels, we also have a brush called a lug nut brush. It's a little bit smaller and it's good for, for little nook and cranny wheels. These ones are pretty easy to clean with this big brush. Okay, I've got one wheel completely cleaned, scrubbed out, and ready to be rinsed. I'm going to go ahead and rinse each wheel individually. And I want to make sure and clean my Boulder Blonde Boar's Hair Brush. All right, we got one wheel down. I'm going to go ahead and hit the other three, blast them off, and then I'll be back to wash the outside of the car. Now I've got all four wheels totally clean. They're looking great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and blast all the dirt, all the muck, all the salt, all the gravel, all the snow, all the mud. I'm gonna blast it off. This is gonna be the longest part of the process because I really wanna make sure that I get all the junk off the finish before I wash with a wash pad. I'm gonna start in the very front of the car where usually the most dirt is stuck. going to pull the most abrasive particles of dirt off the finish with just the water. Watch as I get, watch how much dirt is stuck inside of this molding right here.
So now we're ready to wash the car. Thank goodness this place has warm water coming out of the out of the wand because I've got a nice warm bucket of soap now. So if I did prep this thing at home, remember, both our buckets all have a, a finishing lid, which will hold all the water. It won't spill anything out as long as it doesn't tip over. So if you have warm water at home, fill up buckets at home, bring them. I've got warm water here. Time to take off the gloves, get a little chilly, but ah, the water's nice and warm. That's great. So I'm going to use the jumbo wash mitt first. I'm going to go ahead and just start from the top. Work my way down to the bottom. Remember the bottom of this car, even though we use the really high pressure wand to clean it, it's still gonna have the most grit. So washing everything else above the middle of the door line, above the, from the headlights up first. Then we're gonna come back over and wash from that point down later. Now I can see some dirt in the wash pad. Look at that. Just from washing the little part of the car. Now it's time to come back over to the wash bucket, dunk that in, rub it on the grit guard so we're clean again. You know what's so funny? I love washing cars. I love this. I've done this since I was 10 years old. And every time I wash a car, I just love the act of washing car. This is therapy. Therapy you get all winter long. I've got the entire car soaped down from the midsection up. So that means I've got the least dirty part of the car washed. Now, I'm gonna use the smaller wash pad, the standard. And I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna go around the entire car doing the bottom. I'm probably gonna have to clean this wash pad over the grit guard several times doing this car at this point in the winter. So remember, keep looking at your wash pad. As soon as you see dirt in it, go back to the wash, go back to the wash bucket, dunk it in, rub it on the grit guard so that you've got a clean pad to go back to the car again. So you can see I've got tons of dirt and grit on one side and the other side. So as soon as I finish getting all the, I filled one side with all kinds of gunk, Flipped it, got it full of gunk. Now, I only have this one last little section to do. Should I go ahead and just do it, or should I rinse the pad out? I should rinse the pad out. I don't want to scratch the car up. So I'm going to go dunk this, rub it on the grit guard, come back, finish this last section, and then rinse it down. Okay, last thing we're going to do. We have selected low pressure spot free rinse. You hear that? We've selected low pressure spot free rinse. That means I've got totally clear water now, totally pure water that won't water spot. I'm just going to rinse it down real fast so that I don't have any hard water coming out later. So the last thing that we're going to do to the car is dry it. But before I dry it, I want to make sure and mist it down with some detail spray. I always bring a 36 ounce with me. It's a, it's a jumbo way. I hate running out. And since we're not going to use any compressed air to blow all the water out of the cracks and things, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop the hood, pop the trunk, let the water at least run off those, and then come over with not one but two microfiber drying towels and dry it down. So I typically start with the glass first because I want a perfectly clean glass and then I'll do the rest of the car. So watch now how I do the detail spray. It's a real fast, I run around the car basically, it's going slam, 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 just popping the uh, detail spray at it and that'll make it shine up nice and it'll make it dry easier. kind to us with these floor mats as well. She's really presented a perfect specimen. Using our all-purpose cleaner with a foam setting, blast the mats down first, and then I use the tire and fender brush. 
it's more aggressive and it seems to do the trick for getting all the real nasty crud out of the floor mats. Before I go, I want to make sure and rinse out the wash pads and dump the buckets. So, take the grit guard, place it on the ground, wash pad, wring it out, lay it on top. All right, excellent. Libby made out, her car looks fantastic. Uh, at this point, typically, your tires are not gonna be totally dry, so I typically wait until I drive home to dress the tires, but it's for the rest of the car, it looks fantastic. One more thing I'm gonna do when I get home is use the invisible undercarriage spray to protect the fender linings from all the nastiness that the winter brings. So, you see how this stuff just turns it all black? It also, totally protects the wheel wells from the elements. All right, thank you so much to Libby. Look at that clean car. Also, thanks to Michael Robson and Robson Photography here in Boulder, Colorado.